The views and opinions expressed on the Middle Class VO podcast are solely those of the hosts and guests. Any feelings hurt therein are an unfortunate byproduct of the quest for infotainment. Also, please be reminded that concerted efforts have been made so as not to put anyone's knickers in a twist. Having one's knickers in a twist is not an objective or goal. However, if your knickers are in a twist and it persists for more than four hours, please seek out a physician. Moreover, if anyone were to feel besmirched by any of the commentary on the Middle Class VO podcast, it would be purely coincidental. No besmirchment is intended. Please enjoy. Coming up on the Middle Class VO podcast. Kevin, have you ever done porn? And (laughs) Bobby, I have an answer. And hi, this is Bob Smith. The first (laughs) take you'll hear is when I'm doing my sultry voice. The second, (laughs) they're out. They're out. They've already gone on to the next one. If you need a learning word, just an email away. Corporate narration, tell us what to say. Explain a video, imaging radio, sling on local cars, read an IVR. No, we ain't no stuff. This is the Middle Class VO Podcast. The Middle Class VO Podcast. The Middle Class VO Podcast. So, yeah, Bobby, it does seem like uh, it's been a while since we've done a podcast. There's been summer vacations. We've both taken a little time off. But we are back in the saddle, baby, and excited here on the Middle Class VO Podcast. Yeah, we're waiting for one of the biggest times of the year. Fall for me is always huge, up to the holidays, yeah. Yeah, fall fall is really good. And um, that kind of, uh, we're wrapping up summer here and uh, looking forward to the fall season. <laughs> Bobby and I have been getting some questions since we've been doing the podcast. And we thought we would uh, call this podcast, Ask Kevin and Bobby. And uh, just various questions about the industry, about life, different things. Uh, One of the first things I wanted to talk about as I was uh, asked a question about spec spots. Hey, Kev, I've got an automotive client that is wanting me to do some spec spots for him. Do you think it's a good idea? I think it's a great question, actually, because I have been asked to do spec spots in the past uh, for auto dealers. Um... If you're doing it for a different agency, that's going to be a different ball of wax because that might be considered an audition. Mm -hmm. Really, that might be considered a scratch track. You might get a little cash for. Um, Spec spots for the auto industry is a tough one to answer. I have done in the past, but only with clients that I've done a ton of work for already. This guy, this friend of mine that was asking me this, was asking uh, about a potential new dealer. And I said, man... Go with your gut. I hope they just don't use it and never contact you again. But he felt pretty good about him, and he said he thinks he's going to go ahead and do it and hope it will open the door to a relationship. What do you think about that, Bobby? You know, it's interesting because how would you know, you know, if it were like an automobile spot? You know, you're probably not going to find it online or anything like that. So... I would do a spec spot once again if it were a great client, but if I did a spec spot for just someone that knew someone, I would not give them the whole script. Absolutely not. Yeah. There you go. Um, that That's a tough one because I know you and I both know the auto industry well, and auto dealers are constant, or auto agencies are constantly pitching new clients and they're not going to want to send them a spot that is two-thirds. So um, I, I, th- I think you're right, though, Bobby. I think you do need to stick to your guns, especially if you've not done work for that client already mm-hmm. and have established a relationship. On to the next question, Bobby. Okay. Being that we are winding down summer, I've had a couple of uh, colleagues over the past couple of months say, how do you handle the summer slowdown? I mean, it's just been like, I think the week of July 4th was, I wish I would have taken vacation because all I did was just sit here and twiddle my (laughs) thumbs for a week. (laughs) And blow up stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Now, what I did was um, I took advantage of the time to get caught up on my bookkeeping and checking out my demos and going to the pay-to-play sites that I'm on and making sure those were updated, maybe changing some things around, like new clients that I got, um, taking a look at my website, making sure everything was working. 
Um, just the maintenance kind of stuff where when you're so busy on another time of the year, you tend to forget. So just kind of a catch up time. I think that's a great idea, Bobby. Just do a little housekeeping, you know, like you said, make sure your websites are up to snuff. And, you know, it's a good time to do a little marketing, too, or plan for your marketing. Get a bunch of uh, letters written up, get them ready to go, put them in a Word doc and save them until right before fall, whenever, you know, which is about right now, and, you know, get ready for that marketing. So any number of things you can do during the summer slowdown. And uh, Bobby's had some really good ideas. Skip it a ba 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 Next question, Kevin, are you going to VO Atlanta this year and how many workshops and conferences do you attend? (laughs) I I think it's a great question. And uh, Bobby and I, you know, we went to VO Atlanta this past year. I'm not sure if I'm going to go this year or not. The mood will hit me or it won't hit me. That's the way it's going to be. I always get something out of VO Atlanta. Uh, How many workshops do I go to and and boot camps and stuff like that? Um, I'll probably go to a couple a year probably because it's all part of the training. It's all part of networking. And one of the big things that I get from uh, going to these workshops, uh, Bobby, like we went to uh, Harry Dunn's promo workshop in New York uh, a few months back. Yeah, that's great. And one of the biggest things I get out of that is not only the training from industry leaders, but seeing your peers work alongside you is eye-opening because it lets you know what everybody else is doing and where you want to be because you're especially when you go to these uh short list or these limited number of attendee workshops you've got a dozen maybe it's going to be people that are very very serious about their craft like you and i are bobby Mm -hmm. and they're going to be good so it it, it really is a refresher on okay i got to keep upping my game all the time well you know i've been to vo atlanta five years in a row now. So I'm like you. I'm just like, mm, am I going to go again in March? I think I might sit this year out just because I think that I might have graduated from that. Yeah. Not to say if if I it comes, you know, January and they introduce who the uh, speakers or presenters going to be and somebody is there and I just like, oh, I got to see them. But um, and I talked to um, our agent about this as well. And he said, yeah, I think that, you know, start spending that that uh, money on things that maybe aren't what you're currently doing. Um, for example, um, Randy Thomas has a get-together every September, I think September, October. And this is going to be focusing on trailer work, which I know a lot of women don't do trailer work, but our, our, it, we don't have the opportunities. But it's something that I've always thought about doing. So i kind of been eyeing that and maybe just new opportunities. Like I'm going to a workshop in um, Chicago real soon that's going to be promo and narration and and commercial work. So just, you know, just something new, something that's that's going to tell me about or show me about things that I might not already have in my repertoire. Very good. Next question, Bobby. Okay, this is a simple one. Slate or not slate? (laughs) But there's so many answers. (laughs) Simple question, but a ton of answers. Yeah, yeah. You know, first off, if they say don't slate, don't slate. (laughs) That's number one. Um, if I, if they don't say anything, you know, here or there, I will, if I have more than one cut, I will usually say two cuts. Otherwise, in my opinion, my name is on the file. It's right there in front of them. So I don't usually slight unless I really think it's got to be in there and I'll throw it in at the end. Kevin? Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, everything you said, except I have a different opinion. <laughs> of course you do. The thing, first of all, you know, to reiterate what you said about if it says Don't slate. Don't slate it. You know, um, and if you do slate, um, give a slate. Say two takes. Be out. Or, you know, don't ever say, hi, this is Bob Smith. The first (laughs) take you'll hear is when I'm doing my sultry voice. The second (laughs) take, they're out. They're out. They've already gone on to the next one. So there's that. So, um, I kind of have a different opinion. I know a lot of people say backslate. 
Um, I've been requested by our manager, um, and they even they've got different opinions. But mm-hmm. they told me to slate it, and they told me to slate it at the front. Um, and, you know, that's fine. And they said, yeah, you can even say, hey, this is Kevin Kilpatrick. So that's typically what I do. Hey, it's Kevin Kilpatrick. Boom. L- about a second and a half, and I'm on, and then just a beat, and then the read. Like, not even a beat, like a, a half a beat or two-thirds of a beat, and then get into the read. And then a lot of—actually, Bobby, when you and I had this conversation a few weeks ago about backslating, um, I started doing some on the back. So— mm-hmm. I I don't know. There's a simple question, but a lot of different different answers. Um, I don't think you're going to get in trouble or irritate a client if they've asked for a slate and you slate at the front as long as you're in and out. Sure. Um, if Keep it short. My, yeah. My concern is if they ask for a slate and you go straight into the script that they think maybe you haven't slated because not until the end. So I, I don't know. Uh it's it's slate or no slate. I mean, it's simple question, but many answers. Yeah, just don't go crazy if you do. That's pretty much what it is. Give it a bop, bop, bop. Next. Next question. Um, Kevin, do you get tired of auditioning? <laughs> the simple answer to that is yes. Seriously. <laughs> um, it, you know, I've had some killer auditions come in lately. And they, they've been stacked up in the middle of a very busy two to three day work period. And I'm like, oh, man, come on. Yeah. And so I handpick the ones that I really think I'm right for or I really want. And I audition for those and um, and then move on. Uh, do I get tired of auditioning? There will be days that I'll get several auditions in and, and the workflow is not super hot. And I have time for them, but I still skip them because... I'm just, sometimes I just don't feel it. And sometimes if I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to give an audition and I'm just wasting time and then I'm going to leave a bad impression. And so I got to weigh that balance. Yeah. I mean, and you need to prioritize, obviously, to your strengths and and to the, the, the time um, limit that you're given by some of those auditions. You know, if you want to move that up, if it's due in an hour um, and... Also, just what you you think that you'll have the the best chances of booking. So um, it's funny that that you brought you know you chose this question because um, just yesterday I got into the studio early and like eight thirty. Mm-hmm. I walked out of the studio at two thirty in the afternoon and walked upstairs. My husband also works out of the house, and I said, "Oh my." Gosh, it's 2.30. How have I been auditioning for six hours and not even realized it? I mean, it went by, like, but that's what kind of day it was. It was like, there were, as you said, there were some really good auditions that came in this week. And, you know, I, I wanted to be included on a lot of them. But by the end of the day, I was like, oh, I just don't want to audition tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. We, we go through the auditioning doldrums just like anybody where it's like, uh, uh. I, I got to get some work done or uh, I'm just not up for it. I'm not feeling it. And so I know I'm not going to put in a, a good audition. So I'll just skip this one. Yeah. Next question, Bobby. OK, where do you get your clients? Wow. I've had some people that are following us um, in my meetup group say that. And of course, I'm not going <laughs> to reveal my client list, <laughs> but I will kind of you know, steer them in the right direction. That's where that whole marketing thing comes in. Yeah. I mean, if it's something that fits you or interests you, you know, go with that attitude if you, if you contact someone. Um, if you meet up with somebody on LinkedIn or um, it, it just, just um, what, three, four weeks ago, I bought a new car. I bought a new SUV. Wow. And I was talking to the salesperson and it was out of town and she says, what do you do? She was taking my credit app. And I said, well, actually, I do voice work. Um, I used to be in radio and I mostly do automotive. And she goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so after I bought the car from them, the owner actually was there that day of the dealership. And he walked up and he says, thank you so much for your service. And, of course, immediately when I got home, I sent off an email to him and the general manager of the dealership and said, here's what I do. 
I think uh, I would be the perfect person to be your spokesperson, if not your spokesperson, just to voice your spots. I'm a female, and obviously you target females too, and bam, new client like that. Give it a bop, bop, wow. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. It's it's a very good question, but yeah, you got to start with the marketing. You got to hustle. You got to, you know, Google. Google is probably your first place you need to start. You've got to send emails. You've got to follow up on emails. You got to gently remind, gently be in people's faces. Um, I've got a couple of guys that are trying to get in with me for some automotive work, and they're doing it the right way. They're just, you know, every once in a while sending me a note and just checking in. And they're not telling me they're checking in for work. They're just letting me know, uh, you know, what they've been doing and all this stuff. They're just kind of keeping themselves present. And uh, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's what you got to do. It's definitely a game that requires a lot of hustle, especially on the front end until you get some established clients. And then you still got to keep hustling. All right. But don't go to another voiceover person and say, hey, if your client ever needs an extra voice, can you keep me in mind? <laughs> I've had people do that, and it's like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. No, <laughs> no it's, it's, I know. It's like, hey, I've worked very hard to get this client, and I'm not going to have anybody, you know, trying to weasel their way in yeah. just by saying that to me, you know. It, you know, like I said, if you want to come to me and say, hey, you know, I hope you'll keep me in mind for future projects and not, you know, not have anything underhanded uh, about it at all, then I'm going to keep you in mind and that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, you know, listen to our the podcast we did on marketing and uh, you'll get a lot of tips and tricks and ideas. Uh, next question. Uh, hey, Kev, are do you recommend doing the platinum memberships on the uh, pay to play sites? Ooh, yeah, I did a platinum membership for a while. Uh, for about a year and a half on one of them. And I I did okay. It was okay. But um, after I uh, understood what was going on behind the scenes and some of their unscrupulous practices, yes, I'm calling them unscrupulous, <laughs> I dropped them like a hot potato. Uh, because, I don't know, some people would, will say it's worth it. Some people uh, spend their days and nights on the pay-to-plays. And I think that's fine. That's, hey... Good for you. If that's how you're going to do it, I'm going a different route. And uh, I, I just I got tired of the unscrupulous practices of uh, particularly one of the pay to plays. And so I, I was a platinum member for a while. I got some pretty cool jobs from it. But then I then I dropped it. You know, will I ever do it again? I, I'm not going to say I'm not, but I doubt it. What are your thoughts on that whole deal, Bobby? Wow, I am so torn on this because I am on platinum on one of them, and the past two years, the what I pay for that platinum membership has quadrupled with one client. Yeah, and it's because I was one of the first people in there to get the audition. Um, but then again, is it fair that I had an extra, you know, four thousand dollars to be able to do that? That I should get first shot at those auditions i don't know. You know not everybody has that kind of money to throw it in there hoping that they're going to get the rewards from it um with that being said this is the first year as we start to wind down 2019 that i'm thinking i i might not continue it next year because going back to what we talked about earlier in the podcast is how busy i've been with auditions from the management company and from, you know, getting all the work from my current clients. I just don't really have the time to put into it as I as I used to with auditions. So it's going to be a I'm going to take a good long look at it. And I'm probably leaning not renewing on that. Do we, uh... Uh, we're winding down, going to do a couple more questions. Bobby, what's your next question? Bobby, have you ever been stiffed by a client? <laughs> yeah. Um, this this just came up um, a couple weeks ago. Um, someone says, you know, how, how do you get your money if they're a client in Russia? Oh. Um, I know. It's that, that's the problem with dealing with um, with people in, in other countries and overseas. I, I did some work 
two weeks ago for someone in India. And he was all about, you know, here, send me your um, invoice with all the different ways I can pay for it, and I'll get it done right away. Guess what? He's disappeared. Ah. Uh. Yeah. And I did have a client in Russia two years ago that stiffed me for a lot of money. I mean, I did a lot of different projects. Um, and I just didn't have any way to contact them. I had their website of their company, but there was no contact information on the website. And where do you go after that? So, you know, some people will ask for money or at least half up front if you are going to work with somebody in another country, um, which isn't a bad idea. I'm thinking they probably won't go for it, but you can always ask. Um, I don't know. What about you? Yeah, it's the same exact thing. I have been hosed by a client in uh, Poland. I've been hosed by a client in the United States. Um, the client in Poland, all I could do was send a few emails. And, and like you said, what do you do? That That's, you know, you can't do anything about it. Uh -huh. um, the client in the United States, um, it was my early days of getting into voiceover. And I'd done a bunch of automotive for this guy. And, you know, automotive is, is it's a fast, heated game. you got to get the spot done, get it back to the client. Then you worry about collecting your money. Uh, this guy, I don't know, I was on the hook for about a grand, I guess. And this was early days in my VO career. And we're getting like 90 days out for payment. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. I finally got so irritated um, because at that point in time of the game for me, it was very personal. And it just made me steam that I put, you know, my heart and soul into the projects for this guy. And now he's going to stiff me. And that was beginning to be very clear that he was going to stiff me. So what I said to him, because uh, this was an agency, I said, hey, Jim, his name wasn't Jim. But I said, hey, Jim, would you like me to go to the dealership and try to get the money from them? Is that what you need me to do? <laughs> and oh, my gosh, that got his attention so fast. And he's like, no, I will get you a check within a week. And he had me a check within a week. So. I hate that it had to come to that, but that is one trick that I actually had to do that a couple of different times. Now, I lost the client after that, but I'm glad I lost the client because it was a bad client. Yeah. I mean, you don't want that frustration and anger of having to chase your money down. But like you said, Bobby, uh, you know, if you've got a new client, unless you got references, don't be afraid to ask for references from other voice talent they've worked with. If they can't come up with good references from other voice talents, beware. Get your money up front or at least a deposit of it. Buyer, beware. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anytime I hire anybody new for voice work, I always say, you know, I'll be glad to give you references. Here's my pay, you know, and all this stuff. And I've got I've got a list full of people uh, that, you know, like you and everybody else that I've worked with. They know how I roll. I remember you saying that in your first email to me when you hired me. Oh, well, there you go. See? I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give references. And don't be afraid to ask for references, especially if they say, oh, well, we've got a bill through corporate, then we get a bill through ma ma ma. It's not unheard of to ask for references from other voice talent. Absolutely. We should make this a regular feature. This has been fun. <laughs> I got one final question, though, and I've saved the best for the last. Uh, for, <laughs> for me, anyway. Hot Topic Sizzlin. Kevin, have you ever done porn? And ah! <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> I have an answer. I've got an answer for that. <laughs> um, early on, and, you know, they're talking about voiceover, obviously. I've never done on camera. <laughs> but in the voiceover world, in my early days, I was asked, Kevin, have you ever done porn VO and are you opposed to it? I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. That is a dilemma. Ooh, we're all listening with bated breath here. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, th this is a guy that I was doing a fair amount of automotive work for. But he was also considering taking on a foreign client that was doing adult film work, and they were looking <laughs> for American voice actors to overdub. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah, baby. So here he would have been Sven, but it would have been Kevin's voice. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. They call me Sven, the love maker. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, you know, I said, man, I got to think about that. This is early on, and I'm, I'm thinking, nobody's going to know me. Nobody's going to know my name. It's going to be a paycheck. Um, I never did it. I never did it. Uh, the guy never uh, ended up taking on that account or whatever. Um, but but I'm and there. A lot of people have audiobooks, Bobby, that are more provocative. Oh yeah, and erotica. they, they <laughs> lean pornography. Yeah, erotica. They lean that way. And I know a lot of people that are doing that, and they'll a lot of them will do it under pseudonyms, and some don't. But uh, <laughs> what are your what is your thought? What is your uh, stance? <laughs> On that um, whole genre. Well, I was the good girl growing up. I think we talked about this before. <laughs> so at one point in time, I thought when remember when one eight hundred or nine hundred numbers were big, I thought, <laughs> yeah, I could probably make some money <laughs> off this. But of course, exactly. I, I never did it. And and I wouldn't. And you know why? Even if I did use a different name. Most of my clients are, or or most of the roles I do are are the mom next door, you know, or the caring, trusting voice of a hospital. Right. And I, I, I just couldn't risk that. Couldn't take that chance. No. So we missed out on, hi, this is Bobby, <laughs> here to talk to you about your wildest fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Good times. Do you have anything else, Bobby? No, I think that'll be a good place to end it. <laughs> Happy endings. Uh, well, I've, uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm locked in it. Uh, my face is frozen. I cannot reply to that. <laughs> well, Bobby, till next time. <laughs> this has been the Middle Class VO Podcast. Hopefully we're not taking off the air. But uh, you can find us everywhere nowadays. Uh, you know, you can find us on Spotify, YouTube. Uh, we're f- officially on iTunes. And uh, spread the word. We appreciate it. Yeah. And feel free to send us questions. <laughs> yes, we're going to do this again for sure. <laughs> it's been fun. The Middle Class VO Podcast is a K2 Media Productions production. All views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests. The McVop jingle was written and produced by Kevin. Co-produced and performed by Chloe Dolandis. Additional engineering by Zach Zimmett. Bobby's hair and makeup by Rebecca Adlita. Kevin's wardrobe by Slippery Pete's Fashion Emporium. All previous episodes are available for download on Podbean. For the Middle Class VO Podcast, I'm Tracy Thibodeau. I'm Lisa Lou Perry. Thanks for listening. And don't miss the next episode of the Middle Class VO Podcast. The Middle Class VO Podcast. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah, baby. So here he would have been Sven, but it would have been Kevin's voice. <laughs> Right. Oh my God. They call me Sven, the love maker. <laughs> oh my.